This episode of Another Happy Pod is going to contain spoilers. If you've not experienced the content yourself, please go ahead and do so before coming back and listening to the boys ramble on about it. Thank you very much. This episode of Another Happy Pod is sponsored by Football. Football. Fucking, what do you want? Watch it, it's football. Oh, now he's on the fucking desk again. Can you please get off the desk? Come on. Right, uh, just fucking kick him out of the room. This is what I'm saying. Right, I'm, I'm moving him out of the room. Hang on one sec. Right, come on. I'm sorry, but if you weren't jumping on if the If this makes it into the podcast, Lawrence has a cat. And whilst he is very cute, um, it's, uh, it's holding up our ability to record the podcast. Um, and usually, that honour is reserved for Lawrence. But now it's Jarvis, so there we go. Like father, like son. Hello everyone, I'm back from booting my cat out the room. <clears throat> Hello and welcome to another episode of Another Happy Pod. As usual, I am... Lo- what are you laughing at? Go on, what are, you, what are you fucking laughing at? Another episode of Another Happy Pod. That's the name of the show, and it's another episode of the show. Yeah, but doesn't it sound just a little bit wrong? The only thing wrong, Nathan, that I'm hearing right now is your interjection, right, when I'm trying to do a... Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Another Happy Pod. My name is Nathan. I will now be taking over introduction duties from here on, uh, and I am joined by an absolute dickhead, Psst. Lawrence Heisey. Lawrence, Nathan. how are you doing today? Nathan, you forgot what? You forgot to say that you were old. Fuck off. <laughs> uh, Ted Lasso. Tedithy Lasso... Uh, yeah, Ted Lasso. <laughs> Very good. Right, okay, I'll give the background on it then. Uh, Nathan asked me to watch Ted Lasso. I finally got around to watching Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso is an Apple TV show about a uh, American kind of like uh, amateur league football coach um, who comes over... American football. Nice. Yeah, American football coach, yeah. Uh, who comes over to the UK to uh, coach a Premier League team. Um and he does so on the whim of a random uh, new club owner, uh, and things are not all they seem, Nathan, are they? <laughs> Did you get that off IMDb? I didn't actually. I've re- that was straight off the off the top of the old uh, oh, the old dome. Off the off, off the dome. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that sounds very IMDb. But okay, all right, I'll I'll believe you. I wanted to include <laughs> the things are not all they seem, Nathan. <laughs> Well, yeah, th- things aren't as they seem. Um, so uh, I knew nothing about this show. I watched it a couple of months ago. Um, just a little bit bored, as you were. I hated my job, um, so I decided to just have a week off and watch TV. Um, I already had a week off anyway, so that's that's what happened there. Lovely. So I decided to watch this Ted Lasso show. I heard good things. I like Jason Sudeikis. I don't care for sports at all. I have absolutely zero interest in football or anything like that. Um, so it was a little bit apprehensive about watching a, fo- a show around football, but I thought I'd give it a go anyway. And uh, I'm really glad I did because it's a good show, a good show, a funny show, and a very heartwarming show as well. Mm. Lawrence, what did you think? What were your apprehensions? What are your thoughts? On the Apple TV Plus original, Ted Lasso, starring Jason Sudeikis. You mean the Apple TV original show, uh, Ted Lasso, starring Jason No, I mean Jason the Apple Sudeikis. TV Plus original show. Oh, I, I apologise. The one where not everything is as it seems. Yes, that one. Oh, that one, yeah. Uh, okay, I was just clarifying. Um, I'll be honest, I put this. I put off watching this show. Uh, I don't know why. I Just something about it, I was like, oh, I'm not drawn to it. Uh, therefore, it felt like a bit of a slug to to watch. I watched episode one, and halfway through, I immediately felt bad about delaying watching it for a week because this is a fun show. I had a good time with this show. Um, Every time I recommend something to you, I notice a theme. Okay, <laughs> and that theme is exactly what you just fucking said. Yeah, you're always very uninterested. You have no real interest to watch it. You're just thinking, yeah, I'll get to it. Okay, yeah, I'll do it, I'll do it. And then you watch it, and you always end up liking it. What a fucking shock. I oh, know, I'm sorry. Listen, <laughs> I've, I've already apologised. I'm not going to keep doing this, Nathan. Right, 
what I'm going to say to you is that I did enjoy this show. I had a good time. Uh, I don't normally, and I, like yourself, uh, have no interest in football. Uh, and to date, this is my favourite piece of sports content, <laughs> which is a comedy show <laughs> about the sports content. Um, I had it's not even that much about it as well. I mean, I mean, yeah, it's more the setting, isn't it? It's like how many, how many, yeah. how much was Parks and Rec ever about a park? Um, yeah, or said recreation um, in said park. Um, Nathan, did you know the history of the roots of this show? Uh, yeah. Nathan, could you pretend not to so that I can explain and you can go, wow, Lawrence did his research because he felt bad about not watching this on time. <laughs> sure, yeah. Okay, uh, well, Nathan, no, Lawrence, see... I, have, I have no idea. Um, I've never heard of this show before. So okay. Please, uh, except for the fact that I've watched it, but so please. Well, Nathan, thank you. Me well, let me allow groups. you to cast your mind back to 2013, Nathan. Um, oh, yeah. Breaking Bad is on the air. Um, AMC's ratings are still looking good and profitable, uh, and they have more than one popular show on the air. Enter NBC. I think they're still doing. I think they're still doing 2021. Yeah, but no one likes their shows. But I mean, they clearly do because it's still on. Oh, well, they, they shouldn't. Okay, listen. <laughs> NBC uh, decides to purchase the rights of the Premier League. NBC is obviously an American network, uh, and they call football soccer over there. They decide to purchase the rights to the Premier League to be able to, I don't know, fucking play it on their channel, whatever. And then they realise that they've just spent a large amount of money and there's a very unlike there's a very unlikely chance that any American actually wants or cares to watch uh, soccer to them. Um, so what they do is they put out this big sports promo ad uh, with Jason Sudeikis playing um, a very different version of this character. Have you seen it? I've seen a few. I've seen a few little clips and, and videos. Okay. Not, not a huge amount of it. But it yeah, it started with this four-minute one that they put out. Um, the purpose of it was so they could be like, eh, the rules are a little bit different, but it's fun. And that was the whole like kind of vibe of this little TV spot thing. Um, it's a, Yeah, it's a different character. Um, obviously, same bloke, looks the same, has the same accent. Because uh, I was wondering... Like I know it's I know he says oh I'm from Kansas City and blah blah, um, but I was wondering why he chose to have like a bit of a southern droll, um, and it's probably just because of the fact that it was based on this, um, yeah basically just him this uh, American uh, football coach the same premise uh, coaching um, English football and basically just not knowing what he's doing like there's the whole funny exchange of like oh, win or lose, and then someone says, or oh, tie, and he goes, oh, you do ties here? That's crazy, whatever. Um, I'm just, to be honest, right, I looked into this because I, I did a tiny bit of research on it. I was actually kind of surprised that an advert from almost a decade ago, like, just got randomly, like, someone went, let's do that as a series. And the series is, like, not what I would have anticipated that ad advert becoming. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like I didn't really know about the history of the character until actually after I watched the show. So yeah. going into it, I had no idea about that. But then after learning about that and looking back, I was like, oh, okay, that's quite weird and quite interesting. And yeah, you are right. It is, it is very different. I mean, there are some like moments in the show which are like obviously based on those original like little sketches and stuff. Oh, they and, copy uh, over jokes and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they copy over jokes and and a few other things like that. But it is it is still very different. And obviously, the character has been massively expanded upon because it's a long form TV show. You so you get the opportunity to to do that. Um, and it is surprising, yeah, you're right, it is surprising that basically an advert from seven, eight years ago now has turned into one of the most uh, heartwarming and funny shows of the last year, so yeah. it, it is kind of crazy how that works out, yeah. Well, that's, yeah, because it's, it's a show with like a really, I mean, most normally just go through the standard, um, uh, like they do a little pilot, um well they, they do a pilot they get picked up or they don't most don't and some some do um and that's basically just how it goes uh whereas this is i mean <laughs> this this must have been a weird call for mr sudeikis to receive um what are your opinions on on him as an actor because i i was a bit apprehensive about watching this show because of him i think he's fun but i've only ever seen him do like just the same kind of shit do you know what i mean yeah, kind of. 
Um, I I like Jason Sudeikis. I think he was he he is part of like the what is for me. I know everyone has like a different version of this, but what is for me the golden era of SNL. Um, so like Andy Samberg, Kristen Wiig, Jason Sudeikis, fucking um, oh, what's the guy from Brooklyn Nine Nine called? Um, and Parks and Rec. You got a jail? Oh shit! Uh, I know Fred exactly Armisen. That's Fred Armisen. Him. That's Fred him, yeah. Fred, yeah, Fred Armisen. Or Miller. He plays um, with a silent clay. Uh, yeah, that's him. Um, and then who was the uh, Bill Hader as well? Uh, so like that absolute lineup, the absolute fucking stellar lineup, which for me is like the golden years yeah. of SNL. He was part of that. Um, the, and then his other stuff, like he's great in Horrible Bosses. I never saw the sequel to that, so I can't comment on that. Um, but and like his other comedy movies, yeah, they are all pretty generic and what you would expect from like a mid-tier comedy, I guess. But he's always good, so I've never really had a problem with him himself. Oh yeah, so. no, don't get me wrong. Like it's my issue was like I was apprehensive mainly because. I feel like when once you you know you know some of them times where you look at a project and you see the lead actor's face and you go I know exactly what this is gonna be, like is, is that what you got with this show though? Oh no, de- definitely not. Which is that's what I'm saying. It was yeah. such a slap in the face because like you look at a Jason Statham movie, you go, Yep, I've already seen it. Like yeah, um, and I well, and I see, thought that when I looked at this, and it's it was such I, a shock. I thought the same. Yeah, because with because I I knew the basic premise was. American guy comes over to coach British football. So I thought immediately he was just going to be relentless jokes on like the differences and we, we call it football, not we call it soccer, not football, all this kind of stuff. And it was, it was like a big slap in the face to just go, oh, okay, it's not that at all. It's not just some dumb American loving hillbilly coming over. It's actually a very nice, a, a too nice of a man, a nice yeah. man than this place deserves. Um and yeah, it was a really big shock to see that, and I think that's why he actually works well, because even if you have seen those like little sketches they did for NBC and everything like that, you don't get into the depths of the character in those sketches. It doesn't dive into exactly what kind of a person he is. No, it's just an so actor. I still think so he's a one note yeah. kind of like he's a he's like a mockumentary kind of character that just doesn't have any layer to him. It's just he is the joke. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So it is a big shock for, for, for most people, I would assume, coming in to, to watch this. Um, so, yeah, I was actually really, uh, yeah, really shocked and, and pleasantly surprised by it all. Yeah. Yeah, no, I thought, um, I'll be honest, like, because I, I, I thought this series could have just immediately, like, just been derailed if they'd had gone with the whole, like, like you say, like the argument of, oh, we call it. Uh, like soccer where we're from kind of thing I was like when as soon as that didn't happen I was like oh okay they're going for a curveball here this is something different something interesting so he was recommended by like a marriage counsellor or something give your wife some space so he flew out to England and accepted this job Um, and it is and it's the most heartbreaking reason as well because mm -hmm. like you you can get cheated on you can Jarvis, shut the fuck up. You oh my can God, be <laughs> right. I'm opening the fucking door. This can't. It can't be worse oh. than this. One second, Nathan. Right. Tell All them right. a fact. Um. Uh. Here's a fun fact. The moon is. <laughs> I don't know any facts about the moon. Um. It's not made of cheese. So. Uh. That's one for you. I'm very bad at this. Um. There are approximately. Four cups in my bedroom. I don't know. I'm panicking. <laughs> Fucking hell, Nathan. I meant about the show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm massively panicking. I know, right. You're not clearly not as good as that uh, at that as I am. Um, right, Nathan. Yes, the heartbreaking reason is not because he was cheated on. What is yes. it? Yes. So, no. So, so, what I was saying is like. You can be cheated on, and I think it would be better than this, because at least then you can be angry with the person. But in this situation, what the fuck do you do? Like, how do you argue? How do you try and even fix that? Where do you even start? Yeah. Basically, for those who don't know, his wife has just fallen out of love with him. 
she just does not feel the same with him, about him anymore. She still likes him as a person. She has a son with him, and she's still very supportive of everything he does. But she just does not love him anymore in that romantical sense. And like, what do you even that that notion completely fucking terrifies me? Because what do you even do there? Well, I think like, that's like what, that, what the show do? deals with that in the sense that there's like. He's quite clearly just accepted that there's nothing he can do, so he dives headfirst yeah. into this weird job that he's got. Um, and even then, like they, like he just puts so much pressure on himself to like get this shit done. There's even a lovely moment where like his colleagues turn around and say, "Like, give yourself a fucking break, man. Like, chill yeah. out for a moment." Um, what did you? Um, I don't know. What I guess. What did you make of the characters? Because there's a lot of little characters in this. That I'll be honest. I thought were mainly there for comic relief, and I thought the drama was going to play a lot more into his uh, like his marriage. I thought that was going to be like the B plot that took over as the A plot, uh, but it didn't at all, which I was quite surprised at. No. And people kind of in the later episodes took center stage. So, what did you? Who was like a favorite or a standout? What do you think? Uh, really like Coach Beard. Um, he's just very blunt not blunt in like a mean way but just very quick and to the point and just very matter of fact um i really like that he's like he's exactly like uh ted in the fact that like his opinions and everything and and the and the the americanisms and all that are the same but he's just a much more condensed and efficient version of ted yeah as well so that's what i like about him um nate is amazing one of the best characters on the show so innocent and naive and he can't i just love the little moments where like ted's waving at him and then he looks back to see exactly who he's waving at because he just cannot comprehend that anyone would be waving at him i know it's, it's all very cute and yeah um, he's, he's he's a lovely character and by the like when it gets to his ending uh, and he gets his like promotion to like a main coach I mean, I, yeah. look, I'll be honest. I, again, I don't know how it works in football, but I don't think you often <laughs> go from being the person who fills up water bottles to being the coach of a Premier League team. Um, well, no, but this isn't also a normal Premier League team, though, is it? Oh, no, no. For not everything is as it seems. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think you can regularly drink at a, a local pub where the manager of that team will just frequent from time to time. I, I mean, I don't understand football, so maybe that happens, but I don't think it does, really. I'm, and it's just, like, not a big deal, you know? I'm going to ask you a question, and I want your God's honest right. answer. If this is about... You know, just ask it. Right. I know, more than anyone, that you despise England portrayed... By Americans, specifically London. Yeah, yeah, I do. So when Nathan, you see people kicking balls around, and London streets that we know to be busy, what do you think? So, uh, usually, I would despise it, and I would despise it if it's in Zone One oh, because he's giving you'll it a get free your pass, fucking, ladies and gentlemen, exactly. You you will get your throat fucking cut, all right? <laughs> but there's definitely spaces in, like, the outer areas of London where you can have a kick around because it's not all fucking the madness of, of central London. Okay. Uh, am I wrong? You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Um, okay. I just wanted to get your your two your two cents on it because you're the first person to call it out, so I wondered if you had if you had a reasoning for... Because I, th- I got the impression you'd give it a little free pass. Um, well, if it was central London, then no, I wouldn't give it a free pass. Because if if you are kicking a football around in the in the street in like fucking Oxford Street, you des- you deserve to be shot. You, I'm sorry, but you do. Yeah. You deserve to have your head blown off. That's, That's the rules. I don't make them. Yeah, exactly. We just mate. We live. Well, we, you used to live here. We know these rules backwards. All right, you got you got to respect them. The streets, uh, the streets are mean places. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest, I was on one there. My cat, as many of the listeners have probably heard through this microphone, because again, I will be doing no editing. Um, He jumped up onto the desk, rubbed his head against the mic, and then I had to remove him from the desk whilst straight improving about the cold streets of London. (laughs) 
Um, That's great. Car, get a cat. I tell you what, you. I tell you what, you don't. You, you, all right, other podcasts, you may get them every week. You may get a consistent schedule, but I tell you what, you get some top-notch fucking material with this one, though. <laughs> fucking moving a cat and improving a material about shooting a man in the street. Fucking what more do you want? <laughs> don't make the rules, Nathan. I just abide by them. Um, I'm sure you do. What do you think? Oh, for, for, now he's on my lap, everyone. Um Fantastic. Just let him explore. I'm letting him explore, but then he'll step on the keyboard and stop the recording or something. This isn't fun content. You didn't come here to listen to my cat. <laughs> right. Oh, I'm just going to give him a stroke. Fine. Um, right, Nathan. The the kind of the plot, where it goes, um, like I said, the main, the kind of side characters take the main stage a bit later on, uh, and it becomes less, less actually about, um, like, less about Ted and more about the club. Um what did you make of it? Because we're yeah, not football fans, but I was—I've never been more invested in a football match, albeit not real. <laughs> yeah, I was—I was gonna say, yeah, there is like one moment in particular where you are watching like a full game. Well, not a full game, but like highlights of a game cut up. And I was so invested in that match. I felt—I suddenly felt I could—I could actually be down at a pub with a pint in my hand, yeah. just cheering on Millwall or something. I, I was ready. <laughs> <laughs> to be down at the den with the lads. <laughs> I'm with you though. I'm with you. I mean, I know exactly what you mean because I was there and I was when I saw that them they scored. They only needed to tie in like the in the last episode and they scored that goal. I was like, oh my god! I understand the testosterone rage <laughs> that gets infectious. grown men to scream at TVs. I was like, I understand it. It is. It, it was very like fictitious as it may be. It was still infectious and and you do get a little sweeped up on that but yeah uh, so basically just to break it down the overall plot is Ted is originally hired to sink the club um, because the the owner of the club has divorced his missus and she's now in charge and to get back at him she just wants to fucking ruin it to ruin his reputation because he loves the club so much um, but like Lauren said, everything's not as it seems, I guess, um, because Ted, being Ted, being the most sweetest and wholesome and infectious man you can ever meet, things go a little bit wrong with that plan. Like the owner, uh, Rebecca, um, played by Hannah Waddingham, who you may recognise from 2012's Les Miserables as Factory Worker Number 2. So, starring role there. That was <laughs> off... IMDb. <laughs> um, they they kind of like build up a, a relationship of sorts, and um, and it, and it is quite good to see to see that grow over the series. What did you think of Rebecca? I liked her. Do you know? I was exp- one thing I was scared about her becoming as soon as they had as soon as um, Ted finished that press conference, uh, and then she was like, "Ah, oh, he's he's an idiot," and her own tensions were revealed. Um, yeah, I was so fucking worried and like anxious that they were gonna just turn her into this kind of like Sue character from Glee, where it's like yeah the the person that works for the same like should be part of the same thing because like in Sue's case she's part of the same school, uh, in Rebecca's case she owns the fucking club, um, so I, I was I was a little bit like oh no it's just gonna become one of them dynamics where them two like go to war and by the end of it he's like you can't break our spirits. And I was like, oh, fuck. Um, And then she became one of my favourite characters, if not probably my favourite character. Like, I enjoyed her scenes the most. I was really, really, like, rooting for her, especially as her Krillotane husband or (laughs) ex-husband just started being an arsehole. For those who didn't understand the reference, the guy that plays her, dickhead, um, ex-husband, the, like, century-old fucking um, rich guy. Anthony Head. That's him. He plays a uh, Krillotane in Doctor Who. So, yeah. He's also a very established actor and has done a lot more things. Nah, he's a Krillotane. Sure, he's he was, a Krillotane. He was, he was a villain in a very early episode of New Who. 2006 Who School then. Reunion. Ah, oh, the return of Sarah Jane Smith, I believe. And Anthony Head K-9. as a Krillotane. Oh. <laughs> I mean, yeah, canine, canine yes, as well. But more importantly, Anthony Head is a uh, Krillotane. Um and also um, a former Slovene in the the lady behind the pub, that's the true. lady of the pub. 
That's true. And um, the the um, the guy who plays Roy Kent was also in a 2018 episode of Doctor Who. Was so he? Yeah. Okay, I didn't know that. He was. He was. Do you know the one um, on the spaceship with the little alien who's eating everything? Yes, I do. He's in that one. Okay. I, I'm not too familiar with that that episode, so I'll have to rewatch it now. Um, what did you think of him? Speaking of him, because he became a favourite as well pretty quickly. Yeah, he became a favourite of mine as well. Um, so first, I didn't like him, hated him. I thought he was just. A typical football prick, I guess, like what I would think of when I think of, well, I guess Jamie more took on that role, but he, he was just a bit of a prick yeah. at first, but um, as as it went on, you got to know more about him, um, and and he started to, to change himself a little bit as well, he started to become a little bit kinder um, and, t- and take on a, a leadership role as well, um, and, and there was quite a few like heartfelt moments with him like especially the ones where he has to like sit down and accept that he's not as young as he once was and he, he can't really do the things he did when he was like the, a young fucking um <laughs> i was gonna say some position but i cannot think of a single one <laughs> a bull <laughs> so, kicker <laughs> a goalie, a goal- <laughs> goalie, <laughs> a goalie. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, was- no, you got a point though, because some. I think that was actually one of like, there was some like fucking emotionally heavy moments in this series. Um, oh, and one of them, head. one of them actually that stood out to me the most was the moment where um, Keely, the girl that I think basically becomes his girlfriend by the end of it. If not, then it's. It basically it's just implied um she yeah. she comes in after he suffered a, a knee injury on the pitch which is also a hilarious nod to the amount of cunts that say oh yeah i've got a knee injury otherwise i would have been i would have gone pro you know um yeah so he got one of them a legitimate one after he's gone pro um and then kind of limps off the pitch um and the the ref you can even hear like the the voice over the ref being like oh could this be a farewell could this you know this is a career ending uh ending injury I think I think that'd be the commentator, not the ref. That would be the ref, yeah. See, I don't <laughs> watch or play football, um, so they they're saying that. Um, aside from the fact that I couldn't see any sort of injury, <laughs> I was uh, well. Not all injuries are. It could be internal. I guess not it could be, but then how would the how would the commentator know it was a career-ending one? Um, because he's old and he's limping off of pitch. I guess so. Yeah. Anyone that's old and limps, that's career <laughs> over. Um, in yeah. football, yeah. Well, I guess so, yeah. Um, so he he went in and he has that really kind of big moment where he Keely comes in to kind of like give him a bit of comfort, um, and just be like, "Oh, it's okay. Getting old is fine." Even though he's like what mid thirties, um, <laughs> which is actually not too far off from you. Um, Fuck. Off. <laughs> so yeah, she she comes in and he's like, "Oh, you can't be in here." And she gets closer and closer, and he's like, "Seriously, fuck off." Um, and then she just sits with him and he like rests his head on her, which is, I just thought was so lovely. And it's something, it's a side of like the initially what I thought was going to be a comic relief character. It's a side to them you don't often get to see. Um, yeah. And yeah. I really enjoyed it, which leads me on to the point that I think all of the side characters had at least two plots going on for themselves. Which is before why you I think. Get there, yeah, bef- go on. Before, before you, before you get there, if I can just touch on, on what you were saying, um, I, th- I think that's why this show works well. Okay, because, foot. I want to be careful here, but genuine, generally, football has kind of a negative stereotype and reputation around it. Like, and this show even plays with that. Like, there's the football fans in the pub. The Three lads who every time they see Ted, they just call him a dickhead and say you're shit and everything like that. Yeah. Um. It, and it and it does have that reputation of being quite toxic and and just a very much a, a negative environment to be in. And what I like about this show is that it took basically elements of that. It took toxic masculinity. It took a uh, kind of like the negative sides of football and just kind of flipped them all on the head and just showed you like a different side of of this world and showed you that 
that there is room for for kindness and and just generally being nice in yeah. in this sort of place and i think that is a big reason why the show worked so well yeah no i completely agree i think yeah this this show did a lot with like flipping a stereotype uh, and like there's a lot of times where um uh, a kind of an english thing is moved over to an american show and it's either like played for laughs uh, or the English people are really like overdone, like the tea, like oh, like basically a stereotype of an English person. Um, like any, like watch any Simpsons episode where there's a British yeah. character, or they go to London, or whatever. But they, they uh, yeah. often that happens. And, I'm Lord Charlesworth. Of yeah, Pinham literally, and everyone's a lord of somewhere, Ington. Yeah, and like, like the Parks and Rec episode, and there's the uh, the Peter Serafinowicz character. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that's brilliant though. Yeah. That's done well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so the, so a lot of the times um, it's kind of either played for a laugh uh, or it's just kind of just done so like aggressively that it lacks any like charm or humour. Um, yeah. Like an English person will either be a posh butler or an angry like fucking hooligan kind of character. Um, <laughs> and this kind of, like you say, mixes both of that um, and really like plays on the fact that uh, basically, I'm surprised at how well they got sarcasm and humor and put it into this show. Um, I I was I was very surprised at how actually British this show is. Yeah, because it it and I'm guessing like people on the writers team must have been British because there is no way this was written by Americans no. because just some of like the jokes and the the actual language people are using it's so British yeah. like there's there's just no way an American would there's, have wrote there is no the possible discernible way that an American writer wrote the the wanker chant the first time and then when he gets a goal to be scored or wins the first game or whatever they do the wanker in yeah. the wanker chant in like a bit more of a humorous like a bit more of a, like a jolly way there is and it's yeah. played and, and, and as an audience you can immediately tell oh that's a good chant there's no way <laughs> that an American writer got the subtlety <laughs> of that whatsoever. Um, no, you're you're absolutely right. But yeah. even even down to the little things, like like every other word out of Roy's mouth is fuck. Like it's it's the tiny <laughs> little thing. Basically, it felt like the in between as if it was American. Do you know what I mean? Like it, I mean, they did that though, didn't they? No, no, no. But I mean, like like a cross between a, a classic American sitcom with like the essence and the Britishness of oh. the in-betweeners kind of yeah. thing. So like the best of both of them. Yeah, right? basically. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I was going to touch on um, one of the reasons I think everyone works so well as characters, and then I'd like to speak about some of the characters. Um, sure. I think everyone works so well in this because every single character or like every main player has got um, a sub, like at least two things going on in their lives that make them feel like well-rounded. Um, yeah, I don't know if that was like on purpose or not, but like for example, Roy's got the fact that he's um, he's getting old and he's like kind of losing his credibility as an athlete, but then he's also got his like growing relationship with Keely. Keely's got a relationship growing with uh, Roy. Oh, will you shush, Jarvis? Goodness, um, Keely's got a relationship growing with Roy, but then she's also getting closer and like growing her career and realizing that being famous for being and again, one of the best lines in the season, um, being famous for being almost famous is not a career. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. um, and she's growing into like her her role, um, and obviously she's clearly moving into more of like a um, like a brand management kind of thing. Um, yeah, basically everyone's got like multiple things going on. So whenever you cut back to someone, nothing feels like dry or stale and there's no plot line that feels grim, like and boring because when you cut back to someone, it could be doing anything, um, which I really liked. And one of the main ones I loved was Rebecca's like, and then the scene where Ted actually forgives her when she comes clean is just oh, it's so good. Oh, it was it was so good, man. Yeah. And one of the things I loved about about their relationship as well. Uh, the biscuits that he, he <laughs> yeah. makes he makes her these he well he it doesn't start off that way he like he it's it it seems like he buys her these little biscuits like he just goes to a bakery on his way into uh the the, sta the stadium i guess each day i really know nothing about football uh he he 
the office, let's say. The, he, the office. He buys that, well, it's a, an office in the stadium, isn't it? It's like a still a yeah, workplace. Sure. There's let's still like that. spaces to do yeah. shit. Into work. That that works, yeah. Um, <laughs> so he buys her these little cakes, these little biscuit things from a bakery on the way to into uh, work, and and she just absolutely fucking loves them. She trying to figure out where she where he got them from. They can't figure out. And then I think a few episodes in, it's it's revealed that he actually bakes them himself. Yeah, like every night he's just baking them, and it's just. Uh, when when I when I saw that, I, my heart just melted for this man. I was like, "Oh, Ted, you, you're so you're too pure and innocent for this world. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? He really no, no is. one here deserves you. He he is. That's the the, the most thing wholesome that, man ever. I, I'm curious as to whether if I if I were to say the the scene that really showed off the acting ability of Jason Sudeikis, what would you say that scene was? Probably um, either the scene. Where um, he was speaking with his wife uh, at, at the cab as they were going, he was basically just saying, um, "I'm letting you go." Um, or the oh, actually, all right, three. Um, another one would be the the moment where he gets angry um, and he just like kind of shouts at Rebecca in her office. Um, and then the moment uh, I think they're in Liverpool and he kind of like has a panic attack or something. Yeah. Um, that that was a really good moment. What about you? I I would have accepted any of those three, but they were the exact moments I was thinking of. Like, oh, okay. Which, to be fair, in itself, kind of like just speaks a lot about how fucking like this show was way. More, I have to be honest. This show is way more than I thought it was going to be, and it actually I actually felt like yeah. it felt quite special. Like it felt like um, a, like a, a rare achievement uh, in a sitcom to be like to sometimes transition between being this heavy. Like this, honestly, stood up like um, with like Afterlife and like some of Ricky Gervais's like heartbreaking comedies. Haven't seen it. You haven't seen Afterlife. No. Oh, it's good. You should you should give it a watch. But it's basically. I don't really like Ricky Gervais. That's fair enough. He's not for everyone. He wasn't for me for a while until yeah. I watched a bit more of his stuff. Um. But yeah, ultimately, um, it's it's hailed as like one of the best like kind of sad comedies that has ever been, uh, and this stands up to and to the fact that it's not getting as much kind of recognition as those shows probably because it's on Apple, um, not Netflix. Um, it's it's get, it's starting to get a lot more recognition now, which I is like I I recently I've seen a lot of people starting to talk about it on Twitter. Yeah. More and more, so it is. It is getting there. It's it's already been renewed for a second. And th- I think the second season is filming now. Um, it's been renewed for a third season as well. Yeah, so I saw that. I saw that good. today. Speaking of second season, all right? Because I, I'll be honest, right? This threw a curveball at me when I was watching it. I thought, oh well, they're obviously when, especially when he said, oh, they've got to go for a tie. Um, and yeah. also the moment where he was like, oh, he, the, the bloke at the pub calls him a wanker, and he goes, oh, we haven't seen, we haven't seen them play. Um, Let's wait and see what happens tomorrow. I was like, well, they've got a fucking win now, haven't they? Because they've just said that. <clears throat> and this show yeah. is like overwhelmingly positive. So <laughs> like a novice, I was like, I know exactly what's going to happen. Um, and then obviously they lose <laughs> and they get relegated and they're they're no longer part of the Premier League, which was the biggest fear of the whole um, of, of the whole show, really. Like Rebecca, the initial Rebecca got what she wanted. Um, fuck the club over, but she's turned her way of thinking and now she even says it's yeah. a very series like series two bait thing where they say oh we've got a lot of work to do if we're going to get back to the premier league um speaking as like not not a um like if you disregard the football kind of side to it and focus on characters what are you hoping for like a season two what do you want to see um uh i kind mm, i don't know if i do but i kind of Maybe a, a relationship between Ted and Rebecca. Maybe. I thought I'm they not, were going to do not... that in this. And I'll be honest, I'm glad they didn't. I didn't like the idea of it. Yeah, I, it, it's difficult. Because I, on one hand, I kind of want it. Because I think they would work well together. But on the other hand, I kind of don't. Because I like that they they are just good friends. And that they don't need to be more than that. Because... I think it would be out of left field as well. Because of the fact that, like, in the earlier episode, she, she's still, like, he's a hard bloke to be around. Like, she's a bit of a pessimist, uh, and he's just so overwhelmingly yeah. optimistic. And, like, I think if, yeah. like you said in, I think you said it in the last Christmas pod, like, the, um, 
Henry Golding's character. Like, if you're around someone that's so relentlessly happy, you you begin to just go, "Oh, fucking have a bad day, will you?" For fuck's sake, like just <laughs> because do. it's not, it's it's un, it becomes unreasonable at a certain point. And I feel like that. I feel like she'd have that attitude. Um, yeah. So I feel like if they were to transition into like a like a relationship kind of thing. I would just be like, oh, no, I, I don't know. I feel like it's a tired thing. I think this show, this show's proven it can do better than that. Uh, yeah, yeah, it has. Um, and and you're right. It's it's you, you are right. I'm not a hundred percent sure if I do want it, but I kind of think they would work well together for some reason. But yeah, again, yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, another thing I would like is I, Jamie is a difficult character. Because on the one <laughs> hand, he's he's an absolute dickhead. He yeah. he is that that footballer, absolute dickhead. That that kid in school who was just an absolute prick, but he was good at football, so he got away with everything. Yeah, that he is that cunt down to a T, and and he is very unlikable. But there are also moments where he he's almost there. He's almost at the point of having a breakthrough. He's almost oh. at the point of becoming a better person. And it's very frustrating when he turns away from that and he and he goes the other way. Um, so so I think what I, I would like to see more of him in season two, and I want him to have some more development as a character. Um, and and just see where where that takes him. Is he going to become more of a dick? Is he is he going to stay with Man City? What's what's going to happen? I don't know. But yeah, he's his storyline interests me. I, it, sure. it does me as well. Jamie's um, Jamie's storyline was uh, it, is an odd one because every like you say every single time he got close to doing something he went the other way. Like every time he was about to become like a better bloke, um, he just did like a fucking hard U turn. Um, and to be honest, I think he's actually the show's only weak point. I respect what they were trying to do. Like, I do think that yeah. they had his... Um, they obviously wanted to show, like, how his... Obviously, especially towards the end, his dickhead dad made him into a dickhead. Um, yeah. And he's, he's the cause of why Jamie's such a, like, a fucking man baby. Um, but I would I would either rather see him redeem himself and they had him redeemed by the end of the show maybe he threw the match or something maybe he like let let a ball go uh, and allowed them to like take the winning goal or something like in a believable way you know like that nod that characters have where like i'm gonna fuck this up just for yeah you. um yeah because he's obviously he's a young footballer at the end of at, like the fucking height of his prime there's no way that he's not just gonna go and get wherever he wants to go um so well, it would have been nice you, to see that one... Yeah, it, you're right. It, it would, and I and I think I hope that's kind of where it's going in season two. Like I, I like I say, I do want more uh, development with that character. Yeah. Um, I guess this isn't really a question for you because you don't know fuck all about football either. But like, why do like teams loan each other players? Because like, what what sense does that make? I've never understood it. The only thing I can think of is maybe it's like. I've, to be honest, I don't know. Anything I say here is going to be bollocks. <laughs> like, if you know football, uh, just tell me. Just tweet at me um, or at another. You can't tweet at me because my account's private. But tweet at another happy pod, unless you follow me, then you can. Um, tweet at another happy pod. Why they do this? What? Why do footballers like get? I could just Google it. I guess. Good then. But where's the fun in that? I don't know, it's just, yeah, like, loaning... I don't get it. It's a fucking weird sport. And to be honest, this is about as far as my interest is ever going to go with this sport. <laughs> <laughs> like, being completely yes. honest. Same, to be honest. Uh, I am now a, a dedicated fan of, of of whatever the team is in this show. I forgot. Richmond, I think. R- Richmond. Richmond AMC, or something like that. Richmond AMC is The Walking Dead. So Richmond AMC FC? Is that what that means? Like <laughs> Surely not. But that's way too long. <laughs> that's that's not a name. <laughs> yeah. Richmond AMC FC. No. Nah. Richard. Yeah. No. Do, do you know? Do you, I don't. I don't know how this works. Um. But Hull, the town where I live, is a shithole currently. Well, it's always been a shithole. But I mean, I currently live there. Um. The rugby team and rugby 
is called Hull FC. And I was always under the impression that FC stood for football club. That's what I but, thought. <laughs> fucking guess not. Um, so unless the, unless go. the the rugby team is called Hulk, <laughs> that's the that's <laughs> the only what? answer. I wouldn't put it. I wouldn't put it past this. Time. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Right. I think I think we should wrap up there. Is there any uh, favourite moments you wanted to talk about? Um, uh, the moment where uh, Nathan Nate roasts everyone in the locker room before the game—that's a great moment. That is. Um, I'm glad he got like a few moments like that to play with. Um, Coach Beard and his weird chess girlfriend. <laughs> that was that's very, a very good one. That was very funny and very weird. Um, and then there was a moment like where. He saw, like, they broke up, but then he saw her playing chess with someone else or something, I think. <laughs> and, oh, and he, he went off to uh, Shagger and chess mated the other bloke. It, 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 <laughs> yeah, exactly. That was all very fun. Um, having trouble thinking about anything else, because it's been, like, a couple of months since I watched it. Uh, you say some things, and then I'll remember. Okay, one of my main things, and this will be the last thing that I touch on. Um, one of my favourite things is the scene where um, the... Uh, basically it's all about for for Ted it's all about winning like not about winning or losing it's about like uh, the friends you made along the way um, yeah but like very much so like oh I thought of one yeah okay Sorry, well I'm doing my one currently Nathan so if you could just wait okay thank you um, yeah like it's it's not it's not about that and whereas um, for for Coach Beard it's very much so about winning or losing but he just doesn't express that a lot so when he actually pops off at Ted and yeah. has that moment where kind of it's like two very much so different mindsets. Both can easily yeah. be like a little bit toxic-y on both sides, I guess, because you've got a very big pushover and someone that's a bit too like into the game. Um, I thought that was just a really nice clash of stereotypes meeting and also an interesting way to do the football manager that has a duty as a, as a coach, um, yeah. but not just not have him just completely fucking rage out which is the easy thing to do like the throwing your hat on the field like ah kind of shit um yeah like yeah, yeah. so I, I just thought that was a really interesting thing uh, to be honest i really appreciate his character and what i appreciate was that he was the tiny character from the nbc sport um <laughs> thing he was the, he was it's the same actor they just carried him over because he was the person that did it like they could have easily just hired I someone think, new i think he is actually one of the writers on the show as well is he yeah, I think so. Yeah. Well, there he goes, and he gave him, he gave himself some some good lines in there. Um, what was your what was your moment? <laughs> he did indeed. Um, it's, it's it's not a big one, but it's just a very sweet one. Um, the moment where I think it's Sam, uh, the football player who comes uh, from somewhere in Africa, they have a little birthday party for him before the game. And it's just really sweet because they get him like a cake and he's just so happy and they get him these sweets from like where he comes from and he, and he just loves it. It's really sweet. I love that moment. Yeah. I think they nailed like the the sense of the team that had drifted apart and then the team that are like kind of built back up as like had they had their like camaraderie with each other. They were all had the banter with yeah. the mates. Um, yeah, they did a really good job of that kind of shit. Like I say, it felt to be fair, they hit the British mark on most of it, apart from one moment that Zucchini pointed out where Keeley calls a car park a parking lot. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. That's that's, that. that's the one thing. That. So because of that, fuck this show. Cancel Ted Lasso. <laughs> Ted Lasso is over party. Um... <laughs> Ted Lasso is over party. <laughs> Ted Lasso who? Ted Lasso who indeed. Uh, right, well, that's, that's everything from me, Nathan. Have you got anything else to say? Uh, I give this nine goals out of ten goals. I give this nine goalies out of ten goalies. Um, hey, and I, you know football. I had a bloody good time. And again, I'd like to formally apologise to Nathan for not watching this on time. <laughs> Nathan, I have no idea what we're doing next week. Uh, so, um, well, let me tell you right now. Um, on Sunday, we got a little bit of a bonus episode. Uh, because uh, at the time of recording tomorrow... Um, the Snyder Cut comes out um, by the time this is up it'll already be out so I'm sure you'll have struggled through all four hours of that um, so we'll we'll watch that at some point um, and well some point before Sunday um, and yeah that'll be out on Sunday and then 
the next uh, next week, next Thursday. Let me just. So um, I think, and we'll we will have to confirm this with him. But I think next week we're doing uh, District Nine with Connor, uh, aka Mr. Superkins, on YouTube. Um, so a guest we are so. very excited to have on, who is very excited to be on. But it will all depend. Yes. Uh, me and Connor do this thing where we don't text each other for three months. We'll send one text, and then it will be another three months for a reply. Um, so we'll have to do that. We'll have to do. Uh, we'll have to get in contact uh, and see what's Why going on. Why don't you text him now? Why don't you text him now and just say, hey, we'll be recording next Wednesday. Is that cool? <laughs> How for does you? that sound? And make sure you check out Mr. Superkins on YouTube. He does like gameplay videos and streams and stuff. It's, it's uh, quite good. Uh, so, yeah, check that out. Um, check out Ted Lasso if you haven't already, although we did just spoil it all for you. Um, and check, check out, out Apple TV Plus. And check out um, episodes of this podcast that have already been out. And check out episodes of this podcast. Plug in everything We've else except the stuff that episodes is going to run us the on big the Lord of the Rings. We've done episodes on uh, what? What have we done? We've done um, episodes on everything. Anything that you everything. have seen. Anything yeah, that you, the audience, right. have seen in your life. Uh, even yeah. if it was something that you thought you saw but then realised that you hadn't actually seen it. We've done an episode on that. Um, oh, for some reason, we decided to do one single episode on all nine Spider-Man movies. So that's a fun one. Listen to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it definitely it doesn't go too long at all. Yeah, as you can, as I'm sure you can imagine, it definitely stuck to our tight 45 and no more format. Um, speaking of 45 yes. and no more, Nathan, it's been 10 more of 45. So oh, no. we're going to sign off here and now. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Follow us at another happy pod and um or don't. I'm not your mum. Nathan, say the thing. I'm pretty sure that's my joke. Um another happy pod. I stole your joke, I'm sorry. Can you say it again? No. Okay. Bye or ciao is my new thing now. Another happy pod.